Welcome to Master Time, a suite of programs to streamline and simplify your labor collection. This program is available in two versions, standalone or integrated with Business Central. The standalone version is designed to work with any ERP system through the exchange of flat files. The integrated Business Central version uses our proprietary data extensions. Inserted or modified records in Business Central are synchronized with our cloud database. Output collected against assembly orders are automatically pushed to Business Central and the assembly quantities are output into inventory. Master Time is a cloud-based system with a management console and two time collection clients. We are currently looking at the management console. Master Time's management console is comprised of master data applications, dashboards, reports, and a sync module in the Business Central version. When a user logs into Master Time's console, they are presented with a dashboard. And the dashboard really is an overview of their current shop floor information. The dashboard consists of four quadrants that display different types of information about what's going on in the shop floor, as well as filters at the top so that you can filter by location, by shift, and or by supervisor. In the first quadrant, we see the total number of employees that the company has versus how many are actually clocked in at the moment. So this company has approximately 100 employees and they have about 22 that are currently clocked in. In the upper right hand quadrant, we see the total number of employees, again approximately 100, versus how many of these employees are contract workers. It's very important for some companies that need to keep their contract labor uh, under control. In the lower left-hand quadrant, we see employees by supervisor. So as we can see, this particular supervisor, Mike here, has 70 employees, while John and Steve only have a very few. So this helps you to balance the load of employees to supervisors. In the lower right-hand quadrant, we see employees per department that are currently clocked in. And with each department, you can set a target value. It's shown here in blue. And so this shows you, for example, in this particular department, we have way more employees clocked in here than what our target is. And in some of the others, we haven't actually even reached our target yet. So this helps you to balance the load of employees per department. So this dashboard is completely interactive. So right now I'm looking at all locations. But if I were a, a company that had multiple locations we were using here, for example, I could pick location code 40. And when I refresh this, you'll see all of these values change. So now instead of having 100 employees, I only have 80 at this location. I can see how many are clocked in, how many are contract workers versus the 80. And again, the spread of who's clocked in and where they may be. If I take this down a little further, and for example, I go to Steve uh, Portier here, and I refresh this. Now you can see that I, I only have, uh, Steve only has four employees in this location, and he has two that are currently clocked in, because this is, the scale is one here, and he has two employees that are clocked into these two locations. So this is completely interactive. You can um, use this for some locations, all locations, and then you can actually even break it down by shift. So you can see first, second, third shift, or whatever it may be. So this provides a very valuable overview of what's going on in your shop currently, and uh, it's completely filterable to handle multiple locations, multiple supervisors, and multiple shifts. Features in the company setup program allow you to select the time collection version that works best for you. You can collect time against departments, as shown here, or you can collect time against production orders by checking the production order box. You can select to have supervisors approve time or post time directly to history where it can be checked and edited later by simply checking or unchecking this box. Security is a combination of username and password to gain access from the web and program level access from the console. You can control each program that your employees can access 
by simply checking the box for the program you want them to be able to access. This is General Setup 1, Program 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. This is the Time Approval 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Any employee that has a checkbox under these programs can actually run the program. Any of the employees where the boxes are not checked do not have any access to any of these programs. Master Time's employee file allows you to configure your employees with locations, assign supervisors, and handle full-time and contract employees. Contract employees can be set up with a vendor code. A contract employee labor report is available to send to the vendor showing their employees hours worked. The employee file also can contain direct unit cost or the cost per labor hour worked by each of these various employees. These costs can be used to calculate the cost of production orders or against department codes. Programs are available to show who is working and an approval program that displays completed clock-in and clock-out records. There are convenient reports to streamline the approval process. Once records are approved, they are transferred to a history file where they remain for reporting purposes. We will examine these programs in greater detail when we discuss the time collection client. Master Time is designed to use barcode scanners, so there's a convenient program to print employee badges on Avery business card stock. These badges can be laminated and distributed to your employees. Production and assembly orders print with barcodes for easy scanning as employees clock in and out of these orders. With the Business Central version, modified files in Business Central are synchronized with our cloud database. Output collected against assembly orders is automatically pushed up to Business Central and the assembly quantities are output into inventory. The Business Central version can synchronize with vendors, customers, items, assembly orders, location codes, salespeople, and employees through the Custom Sync module. Convenient dashboards are available. This is the supervisor dashboard and it shows two supervisors with each of the employees that they have that have worked for a given time period. This happens to be a week. It totals their hours across for each employee and then gives you grand totals for all hours work for all employees. Also shows totals for each supervisor. There are a number of these dashboards available to make managing your master time data simple and easy. Another feature that I'd like to demonstrate for you is um, how we can actually take our production orders and reschedule our start dates based upon a production schedule that we have where you can actually just drag and drop these jobs around. So the first two jobs that we have here are 40498 and 459 and these are scheduled to start on the 3rd and 4th of February. You can clearly see their start dates here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move these uh, th with using a drag and drop feature to uh, different start dates. So what I'm going to do is uh, simply close this up and I'm going to go down to the dashboard area here. And we have this production order scheduler. We're looking at February the 3rd. And if I click on this, here are the two orders that we were talking about, 40498 and 40459. These are the two orders that we saw. And we're going to drag and drop these uh, into a different position on the calendar and it will go back and actually change the start dates on those production orders. So if I'm operating in a larger company that has multiple locations, you can see that each one of these has in parentheses blue. And that's because I'm looking at the location code for blue. If I go in here and look, for example, for green, you'll see that I have different orders that show up. And these are just showing me the orders that I have in my green location. So I can filter my production orders by location code, which is extremely important in larger uh, companies. So to demonstrate how this feature works, what I'm going to do is just click on this order and I'm going to drag it down to the 10th and drop it. And I'm going to take this order and I'm going to drag it to the 11th and drop it. And now what this has actually done is this has changed the start date on our actual production orders. 
So I've closed up the production order scheduler and I'm going back to the production order maintenance here. And as you can see, these first two orders were the first two that I was working with. And this is rescheduled the start date to the 10th and the 11th. So what this scheduler does is that it gives me a nice graphical view of when all of my orders should begin, what their start dates are, and then allows me to manipulate them and move them around and adjust my schedule. There are a number of out-of-the-box reports available to help you manage your labor. This time history report is run for a particular date range. It shows by supervisor each employee that worked for them, the days, the hours they worked, and total hours worked during the date range. Let's take a look at the time collection clients. Each of the clients, uh, in order to log into a client, you have to log in with a username and password. And these are actually set up in the employee file. And so here we have Terminal 2 and Term-1 set up as terminals. So in the employee files, uh, records can be created as terminals or as employees. Once these terminals are set up, we also can configure them for a particular time zone. So Term-1 is set up for Central Time while Terminal 2 is actually set up for Eastern Time. That way you can have, if you have locations in different time zones, time collection will work properly no matter what time zone your facilities are located in. In the company setup, we can check this box if we want it to uh, collect time against production orders. If this box is not checked, it will collect time against department codes. We also have a box that will tell that will indicate whether or not we want to use default department codes for the employee. Each employee can be set up with a default. So when we load the client, we need to log in with a terminal name. I'm going to use term1, term-1, and the password for it. And when I log into this, as you can see, we're getting a display that just shows department codes because we didn't check the box for production orders. One of the things that I want you to uh, notice is that it is showing 3 o'clock here. I'm in Eastern Time, and you can see my computer time is actually 4 o'clock. So this terminal is actually working on Central Time. Another feature is that the terminal time and date actually advances every five seconds if you watch this time. It will move in five second increments and uh, this is kind of important because at the end of shifts employees will actually walk up to these terminals, wait for their shift to end, and then as soon as it turns to 3.30 or 4 o'clock or whatever time their shifts end, then they'll begin actually clocking out. Another feature that the client has makes it very handy for working on different types of devices. If I minimize this, uh, the screen will automatically shrink down to fit a tablet, or it can even shrink down to the size to work with a iPhone or any kind of smartphone. So time can actually be collected from anywhere and with a multitude of different devices. So let's actually clock in a couple of employees so we can see how this works. All we have to do to clock somebody, and I've printed out a list of badges here so that I have employees barcoded, and we have the system set to use their default department codes, and we have those department codes set up on the employee file. So an employee walks up, they scan their badge, it asks them if they want to clock in, and they simply say yes, and the employee is clocked in. We have another employee walks up, they clock their badge, scan in yes. We now have two employees that have clocked into the system. You can see that this is relatively quick and easy to do. Since I have both the client and the management console open, let's open this up. And this is a program called View Who Is Working. And if I refresh this page, I'll see the two employees that I've just clocked in. So these are the two employees. Uh, it gives us the terminal that they clocked in from, the date and time they clocked in, their department code, because this is what we're tracking uh, their labor to. So as those clocks, uh, clock in and clock outs, are going on, the data is actually being transferred over to the management console in real time. So the way the system is designed is that if an employee that's clocked in scans their badge again, it will ask him for a department code. It didn't do this the first time because it used their default department code. 
But we've designed the system in such a way that if they're clocking into a new department, they would just simply scan in the new department code that they're working in. It would clock them out of the other department that they were in, collecting the amount of time they spent in that department, and then start collecting time in the new one. At the end of the day, we use a department code of 9999, which tells the system that, hey, this person's clocking out completely. They're not clocking into a new job. They're just completely clocking out for the day. Let's clock out employee 109. And we're going to enter department code of 9999. It wants to know how many units we completed. So we'll say 0. And it'll ask us if we want to clock out. We'll say yes. And what this has done is this has clocked out that particular employee. So if we go over, we had 109 clocked in here. If we refresh this page, we'll see that 109 is now gone. And if we go over to approve time, we'll see that that record has now gone over because it has a clock in and a clock out. So it would check, it would actually calculate the amount of time that was worked by this particular employee. And uh, it, it's uh, brought over the terminal that they clocked in. So it's moved it from sort of a work in progress to a completed record. So if we come back over to who is working, we still have 123 in here. So let's go into the time collection client. Let's clock out 123. And we'll use our 999 code. Quantity completed is going to be 9. And clock out, yes. And so now we have both of our employees clocked out. So if we go back over here and we refresh this page, this employee is now gone also, and we now have both of them over into the time collection area. This one has completed nine units. This completed zero. So we actually have complete records that are out here for the employee. This is a place where the supervisors would review these at the end of the day, and then they would actually post these to the time history. Since I've just uh, brought these in and out very quickly, you can see the runtime here is uh, it's really goofy. But I can simply go into this employee, for example, and I could take their time in, and I could set this at uh, 6, 6 a.m., and then I could clock them out at 1400. And uh, this employee now would have worked um, eight hours. So when I update this, you can see the runtime now has gone to eight hours. I can do the same thing with this other one very quickly. So I can set it at uh, 6 o'clock AM. And this works on a 24-hour uh, clock. So if I go to 1400, that's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, that uh, winds up giving them a, uh, a an, an eight hour day. You can see one of these uh, employees has a supervisor, the other doesn't. Normally, you'd have supervisors on all of these people, but I can simply go in here and I can filter. So if I were this particular supervisor, I would only see my own employees. I can then, uh, obviously, I can get rid of this and look at all of them here. And what, I, what happens is that anything that's in this view gets approved at one time. So just as an example, if I filter on just, if I'm this particular supervisor, and I have this correct so that I have the eight hours, I can simply approve this time. It says, do you want to approve this? I say yes. And that's been approved, but it's left this other one for the other supervisor to do their own. I'm going to approve this one also. And what's happened is these have all been cleared out. And they've actually gone over to the time history program. So there's a couple of other records here. But you can see the 17th is the date that we're using for the ones that we just did. So now we have their time that's been brought into time history. So this gives you a, a quick overview of the time collection uh, client as well as the management console. Uh, and, and, and I hope this provides a good overview of how master time actually works. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to click below and subscribe for more.